Hello YouTube, this is a machine I've never shown, at least I don't believe I have, maybe I sh uh, did a short video or something on the case of it, or maybe you saw it on one of my other videos, just the case or something. Anyway, this reel to reel when I first got it was uh, in pretty poor condition, uh, I couldn't get the transport to run, the belt was simply just horribly stretched on it. Um, well, I gotta clean up this floor. Tripping over cables. <laughs> um, yeah, transport was in horrible condition. Uh, when I would try and use it, all it would do is hum. And uh, the problem still is with the rewind, which is not much of a problem. Not really concerned about that right now. Just mainly concerned about, uh, you know, the playback and such and so forth. When you push this in, looks like a little light bulb. You push that in, and it will actually light up and allow you to put the switch over to record mode. All I can do right now is play until I click that, and that will light up, and it will be in record mode. It is all tube. It's the very rare stereo version. Um, a lot of people cut these up and make mic preamps out of them. Uh, and you know, part them out. Uh, I think pretty much the people that do that should be parted out themselves. <laughs> I mean, that's just something stupid to do. Uh, these are very nice recorders. Uh, the transport is somewhat clunky. They are not a big Ampex machine. Um, however, they are just as good as the big Ampex machines. They were meant to operate that way. Um, they were meant to be able to go out in the field and, uh, you know, record and sound just as good, and you could take it back to the studio and, you know, play it back and, you know, do what you need to do. A lot of radio stations had these machines. However, they had the mono machines. Most radio stations were mono at the time. This was around 1956. This stereo machine is... Uh, I don't know if it was mainly used originally as stereo, but there is no um, functions that allow you just to record one channel at a time. So either you're using two channels, uh, you know, put a mic on a piano and put a mic on a vocalist and just record everything at the same time, or you're just basically stuck, not, uh, you know, not being able to use a whole tape, you know. So yeah, very rare machine I bought on Craigslist several years ago. Um, I got it for about two hundred dollars, I think. Uh, plus shipping, it was about two hundred thirty, and that was a lot of money. But um, I was kind of a uh, a sucker for this machine. I don't know why. <laughs> um, let's see if I can get over to the side. There's the inputs. And you've got your power cord, which is just a standard outlet plug. Uh, you have to have a special connector that fits in there, though. You've got your line input. That is uh, 3.5 mil, or an eighth inch, and that's your output. Um, I don't believe the outputs are balanced. I can't remember at the moment. However, some machines were balanced, and... Uh, they would have a, uh, I think the RCA was the input on those machines, instead of the stupid 8th inch. I don't know why they used 8th inch, especially at the time. Sorry, tripping over boxes. I don't know why they used 8th inch at the time, um, because nothing in the 50s was 8th inch. I, I don't even understand why it was developed back then. I mean, really, if you think about it, now it makes sense for CD players and iPods, but back then it, it made no sense to have this small connector, really. Uh, although I can understand that maybe it was meant to take over a uh, quarter inch, you know, and quarter inch was only supposed to be, you know, some type of insertion plug or something. Anyway, let's fire it up, take a listen. I have not tried out the mic preamp yet. These are actually balanced. This is the only part in this machine balanced. Uh, I don't know if the output is or not, but 
I, I know the input's not um, the line input. Uh, you've got your you can actually mix. You've got line input and you've got your mic input. And this is just your selector. Um, so this switch down here turns on and off this preamp, and this switch turns on and off the whole machine, somewhat like an Akai. Uh, the Akai machines were based off of this, the M8s, the M6s, the M5s, etc. and so forth, um, except this machine is much thinner. Turn on. This one's slightly brighter than that one. Never looked into why. You can hear the motor slightly. Let's take a listen. There's no output controls in this machine whatsoever. I'm going to move your tape thread up past this. Actually, not the machine humming. It was that tape, believe it or not. It smells warm. <laughs> it smells like good old tube electronics. It's got that very warm smell to it. Very nice smell. Kind of like an old. Uh, formaldehyde case or something smell to it. I don't know what you want to call it. Fenelec or something. Anyway, I think I've got to realign the head slightly. S simply unscrew this screw and you've got... Oh, heck, I might as well show you. Um, so yeah, the, the hum's definitely not three-quarter. It's the tape. Um, although I'm probably going to have to take the back off and adjust the hum balance. This is the head. Well, you really can't see too much, actually. Let's see if I've got a non-magnet. 
I screwed over. I don't think I have. Well, anyway, though, you've got a erase head, and then you've got a record and a replay head, which is kind of funny because you don't have a feature for monitoring uh, on and off tape. So that's actually a funny feature that was put on this machine. Don't really quite understand why. There's really no point in monitoring uh, off tape, I guess, in the field, except for checking your recorder, unless the phone's output uh, allows you to do that. But I don't know. Um, I noticed something when I was watching the views, and I had the machine all lit up. Some idiot put the VU meter needle backwards. So you can might be able to see the arm comes up and goes on the little pointer finger and it's glued on the outside. Well this one looks a heck of a lot more professional as it's on the, uh, the back side and you can't see that. Hmm. Oh, maybe Ampex did that and just didn't know it or something, I don't know. See, it's still got the six, 601 uh, marker on preamps. What did I just step on? Still has the 601 marker on the preamps. Um, if you get the AG machine, I, I think it's a solid state machine. Pretty sure all AG machines are solid state. Anyway, it looks very similar to this. Um, this is the rare machine. You can find a lot of AG solid state machines. I've kind of thought about collecting those too. Um, but really, I don't know what I would do with them. As, uh, as really the roll off goes around, I think 12K or something. They don't really roll off as high as the, uh, the Pro Ampex machines. You know, the, the big studio machines. Um, but this machine really does keep up quite well. I mean, you can't really record a whole orchestra or something with it. But you could go out and do jazz with the style machine. That would be excellent, really. Um, although, you know, it takes the old style tape. So I don't, I don't know what you'd do about that if, you know, you didn't have a lot of tape at hand or something. But, uh, anyway, though, yeah, very rare machine. Nonetheless, um, and the back covers, these unscrew to adjust all your electronics, which I've probably got to calibrate those after I've recapped it, because the playback uh, electronics on this channel, the, the playback equalization, I should say, uh, I inserted a much bigger cap than this channel, because this one's got something like a... Uh, Point. Uh, let's see. I think I've got some place here. I think it's a point double o forty seven microfarad, and I think I put something like a maybe it was. Oh, and I put a point o five or something. Or no, it was a point double o four I think, and I point a I put a point double o five in it. So. The electronics are off a bit. That's probably why this channel's a little low. But the original recording of that tape uh, was done on a. I don't know what machine it was done on. Maybe it was done on my voice music. It wasn't done by me. But uh, the dub was, but the original wasn't. So I don't know who that is. But uh, so if you if you know the song, let me know. Well, anyway, I'm just badly on, and I've got, there's a Monarch amp that I'm working on. Here's the case for it. You know, your cord goes in there, and then you've got your two spots for reels. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to try this out with some uh, tube microphones that I've, I've got. I've got some pretty good tube microphones, so I can't wait to, to try that out. Um with this recorder in the music room. So, thanks for watching.